Let's keep clapping for the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one that performs miracles, signs, and wonders in our lives. Give him all the glory, give him all the honor, give him all the adoration. Thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. There is a redeemer. Jesus God's own son. unto man it's unto you we have come to you our redeemer thank you lord for redeeming us from perdition thank you for the salvation of our souls father we thank you lord for not leaving us comfortless thank you for sending your holy spirit to be with us to be in us oh lord it will support your work here on earth father we thank you lord even for what you have done thus far thank you for preserving us Thank you for what you have to do even in the next few minutes. Father, please speak to us, encourage us, deliver us, answer all our prayers, O oh Lord. Let there be miracles, signs, and wonders. Let there be transformation. Father, at the end of this service, let us know that we have had an encounter with you. And let every one of us have our own personal testimonies. And you take all the glory, take all the honor, take all the adoration. Spirit of living God, we turn over this service unto you. Do that which has been preordained to be done today and let our joys be full. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. Let's clap for Jesus. Let's clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Please be seated in his wonderful presence. I'd like to welcome you to this um, second service and I'd like to salute all those that are watching us online on all our platforms. My prayer is that God will bless you as he blesses us also in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the name of the Lord. Recovery of destiny. Recovery of destiny. As we all know, this month has been ordained by God for us and our families at the city of David. And for all those that are joining us online all over the world as a month of total recovery. A month of restoration for us and so shall it be in Jesus mighty name my prayer is that God will do all he has planned to do in our lives this month in Jesus mighty name and I don't need to tell you we've all experienced this year this year 2020 has been a most challenging year for many people and this is because of the noisome pestilence 
that has, you know, afflicted the whole world. Of course, we know about COVID-19. God will defeat COVID-19 in Jesus' mighty name. And of course, in Nigeria, we experience the answers, protest, and the aftermath of it. And as if that is not enough, they tell us that there is a looming recession. And of course, we have all manner of global natural disasters that have happened this year. There have been tornadoes, there have been fire incidents all over the world, there have been floods, there have been all manner of destructions, terrorist activities all over. Indeed, I think last week or maybe yesterday, uh, the terrorists went to a school uh, in the north and took a lot of children. You know, there'll be all kinds of evil occurrences causing suffering all over the world, causing various kinds of losses, loss of lives, loss of time, loss of opportunities, loss of wealth, loss of honor, loss of health, loss of finances and investment. Some people's dreams are either on hold or they have shattered. Relationships have been affected. Well, in all of this, we thank God that we're still standing, we're still alive. This is the 12th month and the last month of the year 2020. Let us just thank God that in all of this, we're still able to worship our God in spirit and in truth. And, you know, there have been some kind of testimonies, you know, corporate testimonies, individual testimonies. We are praying more right now. The women are praying every day. We are praying every day. Lots of churches have opened up in homes, you know, during the lockdown, and some are still enduring. So we have cause to glorify God that in all of these, we can still celebrate God. And of course, some, some people, new opportunities have sprung up. My prayer is that new opportunities will spring up for you and I in Jesus' mighty name. God will give us beauty for ashes in Jesus' mighty name. But to those that have suffered one kind of loss or the other, God has sent me to tell you that this month will be a month of total recovery for you in Jesus' mighty name. It's going to be an omega month. All that God has started in your life will be perfected starting from this month in Jesus' mighty name. And God has sent me to tell you even what he says in Psalm 65 and 11. Psalm 65 and 11. He says that this year 2020 shall be crowned with God's goodness. Say amen. With God's mercy. Say amen. And all our paths shall drop with fatness, with blessings, with the dew of heaven. It is your omega month. It is my omega month. It is my month of recovery, my month of completion. So shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. Say, I believe. Say, I receive. So shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. As we all know, the agenda of Satan is so clear. It's written in scriptures for you and I to study so that, you know, we can be vigilant. You know, the Bible says in John 10.10, 10, John 10.10, 10, it says Satan's agenda is not to play games with us. It's to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And once again, I prophesy into your life that everything that has been stolen or destroyed, there will be a restoration and recovery this year in Jesus' mighty name. If you believe that, say a better amen. But we need to realize that the main thing that Satan is really after is not just to steal, to kill, or to destroy. It is to steal people's destinies. He goes for the jugular. Is to totally obliterate people's destinies, either to manipulate it or to steal it or to destroy it because he knows that if health is taken or stolen God can restore and I prophesy into your life that perchance your health has been affected God will restore today in Jesus mighty name if wealth has been stolen God can restore but you see if destinies have been stolen it takes a special grace of God and the mercy of God for there to be restoration so he goes for the jugular 
So instead of playing games and stealing wealth, health, honor, you know, he knows that, look, God can easily restore that. But it takes the special grace of God when destinies have been diverted, destinies have been truncated, or destinies have been manipulated. My prayer is that there will be a recovery of manipulated and stolen destinies in Jesus' mighty name. In 2018, we talked a lot about destiny, and by now, you should know the meaning of destiny, the meaning of a purpose. And there's a book coming out uh, this year. I pray that you know it will come out in good time for us to be able to read it. Now, for those that are new in church or new or joining us online, um, you know, destiny in a nutshell is God's original plan, God's original and eternal purpose for your life, for my life. It is what was in the mind of God when he was creating you and I. When a manufacturer is creating something, there's something in their minds, the picture. For example, this microphone, the manufacturers of this microphone, you know, when they were creating it, they drew a plan. And their plan is that this microphone should amplify the voices of people, not to be used as drumsticks to play on drums. So there was something in the mind of God concerning you and I, something that he created it for, something he wants you to achieve, your assignments, the real reason why you were created. You know, every one of us, we have a book in heaven before we were born. And that is why in Revelation, the Bible says that there are two books, the book of works and the book of life. The book of life, where you surrender your life to Jesus Christ, and the book of works to register all the things you have done on this side of divide. Because there is going to be a day of reckoning. You are going to give an account of what you have done. So, before you were born, there is something written in your book in heaven. And they are going to check it against what you have been able to achieve. That thing that is written in your book, you must discover it. You must achieve it within the time limit given to you, even by God. Some people have dreams. Some people read Bible or they hear something and it jumps at them. One way or the other, you have discovered your purpose. My prayer is that you are still here. You don't know the eternal purpose of God for your life. May you discover it before it's too late in Jesus' mighty name. People of God, there is a time limit. The Bible says in Job 14 and 5, NLT version. Job 14 and 5, the NLT version. He says, you have decided the length of our lives. You know how many months we will live. And we are not given a minute longer. Everybody has a time limit. There is a time for every purpose. And you must achieve everything that is written against your name within that time. And that is why Jesus said in John 9, 4, John 9, 4, he says that I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. He says the night cometh when no man can walk. That's why he was in a hurry. He was going everywhere. He walked a hundred kilometers just to minister to the woman at the well in John chapter 4. He was in a hurry. Because he knew he had just 33 years on earth and three and a half years, three and a half years to finish that work. He says, I must, I must walk the works of him that sent me. He knew his purpose. He knew that he was sent to come and save the world, to minister life to people, to deliver people from eternal perdition. He knew it was clear, I must walk the works of him that sent me while I still have my strength, while I still have time. May you not run out of time in Jesus' mighty name. He says, the night cometh when no man can walk. God knows how many more months you have, how many more years you have. My prayer is that God will prolong the number of our days and give us enough time to fulfill our destiny in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the name of the Lord. Your destiny, your plan, your assignment given to you by God is predetermined. 
your destiny is predetermined by God and the fulfillment of that thing that God has assigned to you to do is what to guarantee that where you stand before God to give an account of your stewardship on earth whether you get a well done thou good and faithful servant enter into the joy of your Lord or as he said in Matthew 25 41 Matthew 25 41 depart from me you cast into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels may that not be the clarion call you will get in Jesus mighty name you must discover your purpose it comes when you have an encounter with God may you have that encounter today in Jesus mighty name and as you discover it you must fulfill it within time within time or else your life will be wasted as your life will not be profitable unto God if you want to know more about you know this I have some scriptures that you know if you are interested in discovering your purpose you can write down Psalm 139 and 16 the amplified version Psalm 139 16 the amplified version that's the one that says that there's a book and everything that is going to happen every moment is written in that book in heaven Ephesians 1 4 and 11 Ephesians 4 1 4 and 11 Romans 8 28 29 Romans 8 verse 28 to 29 we have uh, first Thessalonians 5 9 first Thessalonians 5 now we have Jeremiah 29 11 Jeremiah 29 11 that's the one that says that you know the thoughts that God has concerning us are thoughts of good and not evil to bring us to our expected end and of course we have Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5 Jeremiah 1 5 is very important he was talking about Jeremiah he says before I formed you in the body I knew you before you came out of your mother's womb I had already sanctified you and I had ordained you that you will be a prophet unto the nations that is what I called you to do that is your assignment so if you get here you become a lawyer you become a doctor an accountant or a trader you better be sure that there is an alignment between your secular work or whatever you are doing and your eternal purpose if you just focus on the secular my goodness may you not end up even on the other side that you don't want to be in Jesus mighty name praise the name of the Lord I prophesy into your life that before you leave this world you will discover your purpose and you fulfill it within record time in Jesus mighty name I want to hear a heavy amen it is a mighty mighty prayer I prophesy one more that before you leave this earth you will discover your purpose you will fulfill it within the time allocated to you in Jesus mighty name if you believe that say better amen so Satan always and can always manipulate rewrite or exchange people's destinies or the purposes of God for people's lives when they are sleeping when they are distracted when they are not focused the Bible says in Matthew 13 25 Matthew 13 25 says why men slept the enemy came to sow tears why they were distracted they were in ignorance they were sleeping he came to sow tears I prophesy into your life that by chance you are sleeping wake up right now in Jesus mighty name tell your neighbor wake up wake up wake up wake up I wake to righteousness so shall it be in Jesus mighty name people of God this is why the Bible says in Exodus 10 7 Exodus 10 7 it says that I have seen servants on horses and princes walking as servants on the earth this is an error there has been an exchange of destiny perchance your destiny has been exchanged there will be a reversal today in Jesus mighty name praise the name of the Lord people of God sometimes people know that something is just not right their destinies have been manipulated or exchanged 
But you see, the real problem is that most of the time, people don't even realize that there has been an exchange, that there has been a manipulation of destiny. This is why the Bible tells us in 1 Peter 5 8, 1 Peter 5 8 says, You need to be vigilant, you need to be sober. Because our adversary, the devil, roams around like a, a lion roaring around looking for whom he would devour or that he will kill or destroy. He says, you need to be sober. You need to be vigilant. Vigilant tibos, non dormantibos, jura sovereignus. The law aids the vigilant and not one that is indolent. The one that sleeps on his right, or like the Bible says, gets drunk in the day. He says, some rulers, they get drunk in the day. Instead of working, you know, my prayer is that you will be vigilant in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, there are some stories in the Bible that we can look at. The story of the rich man and Lazarus. In Luke 16 and 19. Luke 16 and 19. The rich man. He did not steal. The Bible says, didn't say he stole. He didn't kill anybody. He did not womanize. He was not immoral. Indeed, he was a very, very famous rich man in society. But verse 22 of that scripture says that Lazarus, who was a beggar sitting at his gate, died and was carried immediately to Abraham's, Abraham's bosom. But it says the rich man died and was buried. So it's likely that, you know, Lazarus, because nobody was taking care of him, all he had were dogs licking his wounds, must have been just thrown somewhere after he died. But the rich man, that was a big funeral. They chose the best place. He had a mausoleum. There were speeches, all kinds of services. The bishops, the pastors were there, saying a lot of great things concerning him. But the Bible says, he died and was buried and woke up that same day in hell. You would have thought that, yeah, this man will make heaven. But once they die, the rest is up to God. What have you done is what would determine where you go. He ended up in hell, not because of what he did, but because of what he did not do. And that's dangerous. If you are consciously sinning, you know you are sinning. But the sin of omission, what you did not do, what have you ignored? What have you shut your ears out? Are you only interested in yourself? Why do you think God gave you the money? The Bible says that he gives us the power to get wealth so that we can build the kingdom of God. He ignored hospitality. He ignored reaching out to fellow man, reaching out to the poor. God positioned Lazarus near his gate. It was an opportunity. Ah, if only one day. He looked at him, had compassion, and reached out to him. He would be in heaven now. But no. He ignored because he was busy. He lived for himself. He wasn't rich towards God. He was blind. He did not reach out to the poor. He did not, you know, he didn't care about the things of the kingdom. What is it that you are ignoring? What is it that you have had, they've told you to do, that you are not doing? My prayer is that today, God will unstop your ears to hear what the Spirit is telling you. The night is fast spent, my people. We don't have time. These are the end times. It can happen anytime. Many people have gone this year. They had great plans also, but the time was up. What are you doing with your life? Are you concentrating on things that matter? That is why God has brought this message to you. Too busy to care for the things of God. There are many other examples. In Matthew 19, 21 to 22, Matthew 19, 21 to 22, there's, there's a story of another rich man he came to Jesus. He says, I want to make heaven. What do I do? Jesus says, obey. He says, I've obeyed everything. Ah, but Jesus knew him. 
says, okay, I know you are very rich. Give all you have. Sell everything and give to the poor and then come and follow me. That was great wisdom. Because the Bible says that seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all other things will follow you. But he sought money first. So the money held him. The Bible says that he went away sorrowful. And Jesus had to say, ah, it's going to be difficult for rich men to make heaven. Because instead of you spending your money wisely, spending your money and getting dividends not only on earth, but most especially in heaven, you are holding back. You think God doesn't know? We might not know. But you are holding. This man could not let go. And he died without instruction. People of God, there's another person, a very rich man. But the Bible calls him a rich fool. In Luke 12, 20 to 21. Luke 12, 20 to 21. He had a lot of money. He had a lot of investments. He had businesses all over. But he lived for himself. He was me first. My family first. He forgot or did not care about building the kingdom. The Bible says that he was not rich towards God. Are you rich towards God? Do they know you in heaven? Are you rich towards God? Do you have good works that you have done? Have you given in proportion to the blessing of God in your life? Are you giving God handouts? Thinking that he doesn't know. People of God, all these people, they died without instruction. May that not be your portion in Jesus' mighty name. They were living large. They were not aware that the enemy had crept in and diverted their destinies. I prophesy into your life that perchance you are living as a fool. You are not living wisely. The enemy has manipulated or diverted your destiny and you don't know. God today will reveal to you and reverse the irreversible in Jesus' mighty name. Say better, amen. People of God, maybe these people, they started well, as many people, but they missed it somewhere. They got too busy. Maybe they gave their lives to Jesus Christ, but, you know, after writing names in the book of life, their names were blotted out. Once you sin, and do not repent, the name is removed. From the book of life. So there are many people, you know, going around saying, I'm born again, I'm born again. But what, how about your lifestyle? If anything happens, all your righteousness will be wiped away. Maybe their names were removed from the book of life, blotted out. Or maybe you are here, you never knew Jesus. You have never ever surrendered your life to Jesus Christ. You don't have two birthdays, you just have one birthday. The one you celebrate every year. But Jesus says you must have two. He says you must be born again. The first birthday is born of the flesh. The second one, born of the spirit of God. It's Jesus that said, he says you must be born again. You must have two birthdays. You can't hide. If you have two birthdays, you live right, you make heaven. One birthday, you are going to hell. Because you are not born again of the spirit of God. That is why today, Ex abundante kaitula for the abundance of caution. We need to learn from the lives of those that have gone ahead, whose destinies were stolen. What did they do? And how can we be sure that we're still on track? So, the first person we want to look at is Queen Vashti. You know the story. That story is in Esther chapter 1 and verse 12. She had a glorious destiny. An enviable position. People were looking up to her. She lived in splendor. Her husband loved her. She lacked nothing. She had servants. A glorious destiny. But the enemy came in. While she slept. Or she was overtaken. By the glory surrounding her. A high achiever. Everybody bow down to you. Then pride came in, subtle pride. He came in. The way she walked changed. Arrogance came. Stubbornness came. Because she's now rich. 
she just forgot the days of little beginning. She could not submit to her husband. People of God, little, little things. But the enemy was stripping away her destiny. Eventually, the husband called and she said, I'm not coming. And she was banished. And another person took her place. May someone else not take your place in Jesus' mighty name. People of God, we have also Prophet Eli. Prophet Eli, God had planned that his name will endure an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations, that the priesthood will be even with him and his children. But his children were wayward and he could not control it. He was too busy walking, walking. He wasn't there for his children, Hophni and Phineas. And God, in 1 Samuel chapter 2 and 30, 1 Samuel 2 30, God changed his mind concerning him. He says, no more. I'll cut off your family. And he caused that family. May that not be your portion in Jesus' mighty name. How about Esau? We know about Esau. In Genesis 25 and 33, Genesis 25 and 33, look, the patriarch, he was supposed to be a patriarch. It should have been God of Abraham, God of Jacob, God of Esau. But one day he was hungry and he was impulsive and he sold his birthright. He said, look, forget the future. I need to live for the now. The future will take care of itself. And he sold his birthright. And as such, he failed. And today, his name is not in the lineage that was destined for him to be. Satan tried it again for Jesus Christ after he had prayed and fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Jesus was hungry. He came, wanted to steal the destiny of Jesus. But Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. And God preserved his destiny. May God preserve your destiny in Jesus' mighty name. And the power and the anointing to resist Satan, may God grant to you in Jesus' mighty name. The Lord of God, we know the story of Gehazi. Gehazi, oh, he had great bright future. You are the servant to Elijah, one of the greatest prophets ever lived. But because of covetousness, because of clothes, because of things that perish, he lost his destiny. And of course, that story is in 2 Kings 5, 20 to 27. 2 Kings 5, 20 to 27. He lost his prophetic destiny. May that not be your portion in Jesus' mighty name. We know about Judas. He lost his apostolic destiny. He was an apostle. He lost it because of greed. People of God, how about Saul? Saul, God wanted, you know, to give him an everlasting destiny, an everlasting kingdom. But because of incomplete obedience, in 1 Samuel 13, 13 to 14, 1 Samuel 13 to 14, 13, 13 to 14, he lost his destiny. People have got incomplete obedience. You give tithes, but you are not bringing all the tithes. There's just some pockets of sins here and there. You are obeying, but it's not complete. Because of that, he lost it. Satan creeps in and brings all these subtle things to steal, to manipulate people's destinies. And there are people that do not even know because things can still be going on well for you. You can be rich. You can, you know, have all kinds of prosperity and testimonies in your life. But the destiny has been diverted. And Satan is waiting at that crossroad to take it away from you. May he lose in Jesus' mighty name. May he fail in Jesus' mighty name. People of God, some people never recover lost destinies like the people that we talked about. But some people, because of the divine intervention of God, because of the mercy of God, because they got to a place of thinking deeply and repented, God reversed the irreversible and restored their destiny. I pray that God will restore your destiny today in Jesus' mighty name. People of God, people like David, like Samson, like Saul, who became Paul, they recovered their destinies by the mercy of God and because they repented. For example, David, his son Absalom, he kicked him off the throne. 
But because of the mercy of God, he was able to recover the destiny. And of course, he repented. Of course, you know, also the story of Adonijah and Solomon. While David was still alive and Solomon was there, Adonijah made himself king. Adonijah is the brother of Absalom. But God was merciful and he reversed the irreversible. What the enemy thought was dusted and finished, God uprooted it and restored even the destiny of Solomon. May God restore your destiny today in Jesus' mighty name. Say a better amen. People of God, how about Samson? Samson lost his destiny, but in Judges 16.22, Judges 16, 22, Judges 16, 28, and 30. The Bible says that his hair began to grow again. His strength, his anointing that he needed to fulfill destiny was in his hair. He was cut off because of indiscretion, because of immorality. But God was merciful because he repented. The Bible says his hair began to grow again. I can see somebody's hair beginning to grow again and before the end of this service your destiny will be restored in Jesus mighty name say I believe say I receive he repented and his destiny was fulfilled and restored in Jesus mighty name how about Saul who became Paul he was heading to hell heading to perdition but God interrupted him and the mercy of God encountered him as the mercy of God will encounter somebody and he said that ah I'm ready to repent is that Lord ah God said yes it is me Jesus that you have been persecuting he had an encounter as somebody is already having today that same encounter that he had that reversed the irreversible for him God will bring it your way and he will reverse the irreversible for you in Jesus mighty name and there will be divine intervention in Jesus mighty name people of God some people might already see signs that something is just not going right. That their destinies have been manipulated or truncated. There's a short video that I will show you now of someone whose destiny was truncated. God planned for him to live a fulfilled long life. But I don't know what happened. One way or the other, the enemy was able to creep in. And they snuffed out his life. We'll see that video in a little time. I was just walking, gisting. You don't know the enemy. That, can you imagine that? It was gisting. You don't know. And that was how he lost his life. May that not be your portion in Jesus' mighty name. People of God. Some people, you know, their destinies have been manipulated. It has been truncated or rearranged or diverted. And you know, you have an inkling because you can see signs all around you. You are frustrated. There is depression. You are just not happy. You are not fulfilled. When you pray, the heaven is like brass. There is chronic delay, fruitless effort. Some people are even suicidal. There is stagnancy. There is poverty all around you. People doing the same business that you are prospering. What is your own? What's going on? Life is just like a struggle. And some people don't even know. They don't know. Everything is going on well, smoothly. Businesses, you know, opportunities. You have testimonies. You are rich. You are successful. But you don't know. Uh, the destiny has been diverted. Jesus says in Revelation 3.17, He says, such people, you think you are rich. People are buying down to you and say, but ha, 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 you are wretched. He says, you are miserable. You are poor. You are blind. You are naked. May God open our eyes today in Jesus' mighty name. That is why today, I want to beg you. If you know, you have not surrendered your life to Jesus Christ. You don't know him as your personal Lord and Savior. You can't remember the day you publicly declared for him. You are still dodging. You are still postponing. You don't have two birthdays. You have not surrendered your life to Jesus Christ. You are living dangerously. Deuteronomy 32, 35. 
Deuteronomy 32, 35. He says, to me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time. For the day of their calamity is at hand. And the things that shall come upon them make haste. That is why God has brought you here today. Or if you are watching us online. Or oh, perchance, you gave your life to Jesus Christ before. But you know you have sinned. And from these teachings, your name possibly have been taken out of the book of life. Ex abundante kaitula, just in case. Just in case, I don't know. Just in case, it's been wiped out. Then, why don't you, <laughs> once more, surrender your life to Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Christ in me, the hope of glory. Christ in you, shame is gone. Christ in you, a glorious destiny. You need to accept him today. Whether you are doing it afresh or you want to do it again just to be sure. Then, that the one God is talking to, before we say these prayers, if all eyes are closed or you are home, you are just not sure. I just want to make assurance doubly sure. You don't want to regret today because every day of our life will be shown to us on that day. And they will show you on the screen. That they gave you an opportunity today. Danger is lurking out there. But you chose to ignore it. Well, if you think God has been speaking to you, then you are the only one to please lift up your hand and then we'll give you a card. I'm not going to call you to come out. Just lift it up. Just lift it up. Forget the person next to you. It's you and you alone. Do you think all is fine? Or you think possibly because of a lie, of a sin, my destiny could have been diverted then lift up your hands right now or you have never given your life to jesus christ before lift it up lift it up and put thank you my sister there is somebody there on the right there's a lady there on the right yes anybody there's somebody else amen and if you are online there's someone behind there amen forget about anybody else it's about you and your destiny let's clap for jesus let's clap for jesus thank you my sister amen hallelujah let's receive those cards amen and then uh we'll talk to you after and if you are online there's a number scrolling please just call that number and they tell you about what you're about to do so if you receive that a card you know or you lift up your hands then repeat after me amen and say lord jesus i come to you right now the bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of god i know i'm a sinner please forgive me my sins i plead the blood of jesus to wash me clean of every sin of commission sin of omission Make me brand new today. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Write my name in the book of life. Rewrite my destiny. Restore my manipulated destiny. And make me brand new. If you say that prayer, as simple as that, your name has been restored or written in the book of life. And welcome to the family of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's clap for Jesus. Let's clap for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. For the rest of us, we want to ask for the mercy of God. And I trust that we have repented. Psalm 94 and verse 18. Psalm 94 and 18 says, When I said, My foot slippeth, thy mercy, O Lord, held me up. May the mercy of God hold you up today in Jesus mighty name so we just want to say some prayers and I know that at the end of these prayers there will be restoration joy will be restored your dreams will be restored in Jesus mighty name people of God Ezekiel 21 26 to 27 Ezekiel 21 26 to 27 he says look there is an error that some people their destinies have been manipulated what God had given them other people are sitting there they're sitting on your chair on your horse they are riding your horses they are using your time the blessing that God has given you they have manipulated your destiny they have derailed your destiny they have diverted your destiny but God says because you are here or you are listening to me God says he will remove them he will uproot them and your glory and your blessing will return in Jesus' mighty name. He says in verse 27, says, I will overturn. I will overturn. I will overturn. And give it 
to the rightful person say father in the name of jesus christ everyone that is sitting on my destiny on my blessing on my progress father uproot them oh lord uproot them oh lord and restore me to my god-given destiny lift up that prayer point that everyone that is sitting on your destiny on your progress on the plan of god for your life on your blessing that god will uproot them he will uproot them he will uproot them he will dethrone them he will remove them and give it back to you so shall it be in jesus mighty name we pray Lord god there's a story in second samuel 16 4. Second samuel 16 4. mephibosheth was the last son the only surviving son of Saul, King Saul. So when David became king, he looked for that child because of Jonathan, his friend. He wanted to, you know, be gracious unto the son of, you know, or anybody in the, in the household of, 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 of Saul because of his friendship with Jonathan. And Ziba, his help, his helper, because this guy was lame. When there was pandemonium, Ziba was carrying him, then he dropped him, so he lost his legs. But God still elevated him. And David said, everything that, be, that belongs to Saul, give it to him. But one day, Ziba came and told a lie to David. And David said in that scripture, that everything that belongs to the man, says, give it to Ziba. People of God, every Ziba in your life, God will expose them. Everyone that is lying to receive that, that which does not belong to them, that which belongs to you, God will disgrace them. I said God will uproot them. Everyone that has stolen your destiny, that has stolen your wealth, your health, God will dethrone them. He will uproot them. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, every zipper in my life, Father, expose them, dethrone them. Oh, expose them disgrace them, destroy them in Jesus. We lift up my prayer that every Ziba in my life, everyone that is acting as a friend, as a carer, everyone that is acting as a friend but is a foe, Father, disgrace them. Father, expose them, remove them from my life in Jesus' mighty name. We are prayed. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I bind every spirit of depression, every suicidal spirit every spirit of frustration in my life i bind it i cast it out right now in the name of jesus christ i receive the joy of the lord i see times of refreshing from the presence of god in jesus my name so shall it be in jesus my name say father in the name of jesus christ every garrison of satanic hosts organized against my life against my destiny scatter them scatter them they will never regroup in the name of just lift up that prayer upon every garrison of the host of the enemy that are attacking me stealing my time stealing my blessing stealing my destiny father scatter them scatter them scatter them scatter them they will not regroup in the name of just Christ. paralyze them with the fear of god paralyze them with the fear of god Paralyze them with my fear. Master take a pro to blashanta. Mara maka posto to blashente. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I take back all that has been stolen from me. I receive a sevenfold restoration. In Jesus, I lift up that prayer point. Everything that the enemy has stolen, I receive sevenfold return. In the name of Jesus Christ, lift it up, lift it up, lift it up right now. Lift it up, lift it up, lift it up, lift it up, lift up. Masse take a prosto to bless and that I can sit here. Yet take a prosto to bless and that. Maka prosto to bless and that. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, every time that I've lost, every time, every opportunity that I've lost every opportunity that i've lost because of the attack of the enemy father compensate me compensate me compensate me compensate me compensate me oh lord give me double for my trouble give me double for my trouble as you gave job double as you gave him twice as much father as you prolong his days prolong my days to be able to enjoy to, be able to enjoy all that that had been stolen away from me in jesus mighty name 
Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, everything, every fish, every satanic mouth that swallowed my destiny, swallowed my progress, like the fish that swallowed Jonah, I command you, in the name of Jesus Christ, vomit right now, in the name of the lift of that prayer, but everything that swallowed your life, that swallowed your time, that swallowed your progress, that swallowed your prosperity, they must vomit, they must vomit, everyone that swallowed your progress, everyone that swallowed the destiny of your children, oh, they must vomit, they must vomit, they must vomit, after the order of Jonah, in Jesus' mighty name, we pray, say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, restore my wasted years, wasted efforts, restore wasted opportunities, wasted time. You are the redeemer. Redeem the times for me. Oh, restore wasted dreams, broken dreams. Oh, all my money, the health, the wealth, the strength, the blessings. Oh, that have been taken away. My life. Father, restore, restore my family, compensate me, let there be restoration of money, restoration of opportunities, restoration of health, restoration of wealth, restoration of family, restoration of strength, restoration of blessings. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, all the wasted years, let there be a restoration, all wasted opportunities, wasted efforts, let there be restoration right now. Compensate me, O oh Lord, for lost time. So shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I shall not die. I will live to declare the works of God. Multiply the numbers of my days. Do not let me die before my time. Withdraw my name, the name of a member of my family, a member of my church, from the book of death. Father, extinguish the power of the grave over my life i will see the new year i will see the new year with awesome testimonies i will see the new year with awesome testimonies in the name of jesus christ i will not be taken away in the midst of my days i will fulfill destiny in jesus mighty name we pray say father in the name of jesus christ i remove every barrier to my breakthrough right now in the name of Jesus Christ father every barrier to my breakthrough I receive right now father open rivers in high places for me open the heavens over me let the fountains begin to spring up in the midst of my valleys father let fountains begin to spring up in the midst of my families of my valleys father make the wilderness a pool of water for me and every dry land springs of water Father, let the wilderness become a pool of water. Let my wilderness become a pool of water. Oh, the dry land, let waters begin to spring forth right now. Lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. Every barrier against my breakthrough, it is shattered in the name of Jesus Christ. I will testify in Jesus' mighty name we pray. People of God, Isaiah 6.1, Isaiah 6.1. He says that the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. I entered into my destiny. I moved close to God. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, every King Uzziah that is blocking my access to God, my access to blessing, Father, let them die in the name of Jesus Christ. Let them die. Every King Uzziah in my life, let them die. Every blockade, let them die. Let them die. Let them die right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift up that prayer point. Lift up that prayer point. Lift up that prayer point. Because I must see and experience the Lord that is good. I receive times of refreshing every blockade to my progress oh father consume them by the fire of the holy ghost consume them by the fire of the holy ghost in jesus mighty name we pray say father father in the name of Jesus Christ, let me fulfill purpose. Let me fulfill destiny. My life will not be cut short. Let me fulfill purpose. Let me fulfill destiny. In Jesus, I lift up that prayer point. Father, let me discover my purpose. Let me fulfill it. Let me fulfill destiny. Let me fulfill the assignment, the real reason that you 
you, you, you brought me that you saved me let me enter into it in jesus mighty name we pray people of god it's not how long you pray it's a prayer of faith you need to believe in what you are saying the bible says that a prayer of faith will save your prayer of faith will save you today in jesus my name say father i receive the power to pursue to overtake and recover all i receive the anointing to pursue to overtake and recover all father everything that has been stolen from me i pursue i overtake i recover all in jesus name. lift up that prayer point i receive the anointing oh to pursue to overtake and recover all everything that has been stolen even from me i recover all i recover all i recover all in jesus mighty name we pray say father in the name of jesus christ have mercy upon me have mercy upon me help me by the power of your holy spirit to recover every stolen destiny every diverted destiny every manipulator's destiny i will finish well i will finish strong in the name of jesus christ so shall it be in jesus mighty name we pray i can see everything turning around turning around turning around for my good i can see everything turning around now turning around now turning around for my good i can see everything turning around turning around turning around so shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. The word of God for you, additional word for those that are supporting the work of God, is in 2 Kings 4.26. In 2 Kings 4.26, the Shunammite woman, she moved from, eh, it shall be well, to it is well. And God said, I should say, tell somebody, that you are moving from, well, I believe, it shall be well, which is a song of faith. There's nothing wrong with it. But it's moving you to, it is well that is a song of victory it is well is a song of victory it is well it is well it is well in the name of jesus it is well with my soul today there is no more sorrow it is well it is well it is Name of Jesus, it is well with my soul. 